Good morning, one and all present here. I would like to welcome all the dignitaries and participants for the second day of the event 2022 workshop. Now I would like to request all the dignitaries to occupy their positions for that. Uh, I've got to go. The world is full of diamonds and gems, and we are having some of them here today to build this event. If this note, I would like to give my heartiest welcome to our chief guest, Mr. Ashish Dokari. I would uh, request Mr. Soro to present a bouquet to our chief guest, Abhay. Okay. He actually daughter he joined the engineering services and goes to become the director general of the Public Board. After his uh, retirement, he served as an advisor to NDMC Music. For over 14 years now, he also served as the chairman of Civil Engineering Division Council, the Open Box on National Standard in the Bureau of Indian Service. Sir, I would like to request uh, you to uh, enlighten us to the world of this summer. Is there even a good one? A very good morning to all of you. We have a very scant audience, but anyway, it's always welcome. It is early morning to get up and come all the way. It's a pleasure and the effort. Well, the topic of the day is about the Building acoustics and noise control. The topic, right? Now, let me first admit I am a civil engineer. It's this topic primarily relates to electrical engineers and things like that. But since I have been associated with a large number of professionals all over the country, right from Arunachal Pradesh to Bhutan to Andaman, Nicobar Islands to Maharashtra, Karnataka, Goa. Border is of Karnataka, uh, Sudras, border is of Indo Bangladesh, border fencing, things like that. I have fairly vast experience of dealing and tackling these noises and these issues. Now, in our Hindu, not mythology, in Hindu our, uh, tradition, sound is considered a very, very important thing. There is something called Nad Aradhana. That means you pray the sound. Which scientists have later on said in this world was said to a big bang theory. It's primarily the sound. And therefore, sound is a very, very important part of all of us, all of us. And it is really unfortunate that the advancement and the development we have managed to make ourselves partially deaf. Many sounds which you could hear very clearly, now we are unable to hear. So there is a constant blast of sound to all of us. I'm sure I, I'm an audible to all of you. I'm told when a, when a child is born, when he grows up, he, his ear is very alert to even minor sounds. But as we mature, we are unable to hear those fine sounds in certain 
detachable level which are below a particular level we are not able to why because there is constant whirring of noise in the house yesterday i was counting you have in your house ceiling fans which make so much of whirring noise you have air conditioner where the air blow is there which makes a lot of noise then exhaust fans are there they make a noise now you have dishwashers you have washing machines so many machines are all there in the house of course we have our bs have made standard we have made standard for all these machines certain that you shouldn't cross certain decibel levels but as you know in our country a lot of things are done without bs mark without bs standards plus i would like to be enlightened whether some total of the dsbs have been also laid down you may lay down okay a ceiling fan should not have more than so many decibels exhaust fan should not have so many decibels fridge may not have so many decibels this is this that but some total of all when you keep on adding all these machines there is a mix see there is a you know so many things working simultaneously parallel in the house what is the sum total effect of the noise in the house average impacts all members of the family where is old person or where is the infant anybody can uh, think and enlighten me if there is any limit laid down that not to, not more than so many some total of decibels should not exceed my house yeah. and where not there it is high time we do it because it has a very deep impact as you age Like I have crossed seventy, I'm now literally seventy three, seventy four. I started seeing the impact in my ears. I'm sure the gentleman there is probably of my age or maybe older. We start as you age, you start feeling the effects of this noise. It is some. Well, if it is pleasing, think it is a pleasing sound, but noise is the worst thing. And this is what I've talked about inside the house, but immediately outside your house, there's a constant whirring and noise going on. somebody constructing something something cutting something vehicles whizzing at fast pace when i was in the service i was living in those multi story apartments on the outer ring road on the ring road sector 12 uh, sector 13 netaji nagar this bank on the ring road one could not sleep so so much noise along the ring road but nothing seemed to be done nobody nobody bothered and in those houses all levels of people are living right from infant to the old people so my idea of talking to all of you is to bring that awareness now you may say sir there is no no option that i beg to depart for that i'll like to give you i like to give you to see very practical physical examples which i personally observed as part of my service i was also deputy to income tax department to value properties i was in the state of karnataka i had to go to a place called hospet i don't know whether you many of you have heard of hospet and near hospet is a place called gangavat which is a rice soul of karnataka there i was put up in a hotel maybe a three star hotel no ac ceiling height is about 11 feet very comfortable conditions in summer when i entered the toilet no exhaust fan but there is no smell being a engineer we are used to this constant whirring of noise i was looking for where is the switch for exhaust fan there is no such switch then i observed that the window exhaust window that closed with a cardboard with a few holes half inch holes put on the on that uh, window curious to know i went up to the terrace and i found at the terrace on the shaft on top of the shaft there put a large exhaust fan very at very slow speed no noise which is silently sucking away the air from the shaft so all smells of toilets and the room there was constant air flow from outside to the room to the toilet and going away at the terrace level no noise he has saved the cost of exhaust fan cost of wiring and worst of all the noise is gone 
and there is no need of a AC. This is done at a small place in Karnataka. I saw in 95. My point is we have to apply our mind to it. Let me give you another example. I served in Arunachal Pradesh and government of Bhutan in 80s, 70s and 80s. Those times there was no gas supply for cooking. You have to, in those areas, you have to cook on wood, firewood. All the smoke would come. Sometimes fire would be wet. Our housewives would have terrible time cooking. There, something called a smokeless villa was designed, probably with the help of UNICEF. It had three openings. You put in a fire, uh, firewood inside, and you have one pot, main pot, where you can cook, and the other two pots, you just put water there, if you keep on getting it. And then there's a pipe which takes you above the roof, and the six to eight above the roof. And use the differential of temperature and the air pressure. And simply sucks away all the smoke. And there's no smell and no noise. I mean, no uh, uh, smoke in the eyes. So using the nature to, to bring in this kind of fresh air to use this thing, why can't we go to that? Yet another example I'll give you. I was a small place called Firozpur in Punjab. Pipe supply had not yet come in the 60s. We used to have only hand pumps. But the building was three storied. How do you take water on the upper floor? The same hand pump had a stop pump at the end and a pipe vertical up. You close the stop pump, pump, water goes to the upper floor. And you pump a little harder, you could go even to the third floor. Of course, not beyond, and the separation takes place. I say, why do you have to install a pump to pump water every time? And there is no electricity in remote areas, for example. India has a huge plan of building million houses for poor in all over the remote areas. Of course, fortunately, now the electricity position is very good. But then problems of repairs are there, problems of investments are there. Why can't you have hand pumps with which you can pump water up there? It is physically good, gives you exercise, plus gives you water whenever you want. Think it over. What I'm trying to say in short is, it is for us to decide whether we want to have these noise producing stuff in our, in our houses, around our areas. So you must see the utility, ultimately, who is getting affected with all this? All of us. Uh, we have a list of huge boards laying down decibel levels, this level, that level, this level. But does it really work in real life? When the entire, all competition comes put together, what happens? And I'm sorry to note, my BS uh, head is there. You hardly find BS marked products in the market. Especially the electric market, go to Bagay's place. So, whatever decibel levels you are laying down in your courts, practically you don't find them. So, what do we do about it? Is it really worth doing all this effort if you are not able to implement it? If you are not able to bring the, improve the uh, common man's health, common man's need. I'll just like, I have just flagged these three, four issues. Number one, we should try to use the nature as far as possible. Let us not go in for that Western style that let us do closed door, central air conditioning. Sounds very nice. But you're creating a very, very big problem when you close everything. You don't let nature work. Then all kinds, all kinds of things start working inside you. In the central AC, if somebody has ever had infection of the duct from where the air flows, you will have a shock of life. How many germs, how many pneumonia, and maintenance in our country is as it is as we know. We should try as far as possible not to have such kind of things. I'm sorry, I may have underpulled 
many feathers. So a lot of people have a business at that time. But the fact of life cannot be ignored. Ultimately, our well-being has to be the top priority. If this doesn't happen, there's no point. Thank you very much. With hope for working here, this set up a fresh platform for our speakers to deliver their presentation in the area of creating a positive trend in our With this, I would like to introduce our second guest, Mr. Arun Kumar. Sir is head civil engineering department, DIS Lutheran. Uh, he was involved as member secretary in various committees towards landmark revision of earthquake codes, codes on use of glass in building, revision of fire door standards in the NOC. With these words, I would like to uh, request Sir to present this course. A very good morning, uh, when all persons here, those joined physically, those who are attending to the virtual mode. Uh, yesterday, in fact, uh, we had to sort of wrap the introduction of a little part of the PA speaker side. Uh, we have been mentioning, uh, Chairman uh, CPC of BAS, which others are also mentioned about, that there are a variety of Indian standards available, but who are using it? So the very purpose of today's discussion is that only that all the planners, the designers, the material suppliers, and most importantly, the government departments who are giving on submitting the NOC, who are giving the certificate to building, they should not blindly permit or give a signature on a piece of paper. They should come and inspect or I mean, they have to inspect the building or they have to have mechanisms. Like, just like uh, yesterday, Mr. Dublin mentioned about even you know, handheld uh, application, which uh, even the noise level can be very well uh, measured at a critical level. So maybe both uh, in an empty room as well as partially outside or fully outside room. It is up to the number of authorities to finally verify, but more than that, the owners of uh, buildings, they also have an equal response. They need not blindly just Trust on their material suppliers or their building service provision. They have to have a check. More than that, the professionals are supposed to sign as per the National Building Code, Part 2, there are series of annexes and forms, which every building professional submits to the authority telling that he has designed certain element of a building in compliance to the National Building Code. So, if that particular certificate is being given, it should always accompany. It has proven this certificate. Such tests need not be conducted in an external laboratory, but can always do it in an existing uh, structure or the building itself. So maybe uh, there are uh, there are possibilities that we can improve such items in the next edition of the building uh, code or in its revision in the next time. And uh, to add further, yesterday also and today also mentioned, very many people mentioned that noise is a silent killer. Uh, I still uh, I still remember having worn uh, the BIS for more than 17 years now. In, in, in initial times, we used to sit in an open window office, then came or the site, and then we are centralized in it. These days, after 6.30, we feel a lot of silence because the AC duct is down, powered off. Then we see even the duct was waiting and all, and we were sitting all eight and a half to 10 hours all through that. And it is persistent, we are exposing our ears. That's what Sarah was correctly mentioning. We need to tweak our uh, system. It is not that they are uh, bad or so. We need to examine is it at the right uh, portion for which it was intended to be designed. Are we periodically checking them? The part rule of the National Building Code talks about access and availability, maintenance also. So are we doing the periodic maintenance? That is most important. I think we have got a lot of takeaway. Uh, with that, I would uh, like to close here. And I believe most of the audience present uh, here have been. Uh, uh, witness to some of the good as well as certain bad examples in projects in their uh, area or in professional life. Maybe with uh, these two days of uh, interactive sessions with uh, technical people, including from the NBL scientists, we may be able to ensure that all of our building projects are designed not only for uh, the acceptable goals and practices, our effort should be to surpass them. We as a professional should surpass and go towards excellence. Maybe if we all try to do that way, maybe our hands, the, all the generations to come, they would learn a lot more instead of simply something maybe from the best or other parts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.
what could be implemented so that we can get rid of noise pollution so we have taken we have noted those those points and today also we have a brainstorming session wherein we will invite you all to please give your ideas and suggestions and of course our bis team will be there so we will be noting down your points and maybe in the future those can be rightly put up at right places so that was the basic submission behind our uh, organizing this workshop so i request you all to please proactively participate in this event so that we can get the maximum benefit of this event. and again thanks to dogda sir for sparing his time sri uh, arun kumar ji because from the first day he has been, the bas team have been very proactive and they have been very helpful to us in organizing this event and i am also thankful to my divisional head dr sanjay adar because it was it was due to his blessings and support that we could organize this two days event under the umbrella of metallurgy society thank you thank you very much sir now i would like to request dr sanjay adar to present the moment of token of love and respect to our chief <coughs> Yeah. Okay. 